Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. As always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. And with that, today I want to follow up on last one time's uh, podcast, which was around fantasy and how to create fan- fantasy and build fantasy. We've had a lot of emails, a lot of questions about it. And I want to go a little bit further into it with looking at coercion in fantasy, which I know is intrinsically it almost feels like um, it's a paradox it's like a, a contra- contradiction in terms because if you're fantasizing and you're merely thinking about stuff you're not actually doing it physically then is there something known as forcing the other person to fantasize along with you is that even a thing well yeah I think that is a really interesting question right because if you're just asking somebody to imagine something then can there be coercion involved? Uh, So that is a great question. Uh, But I do think if people don't know, if they don't know their own values and beliefs, like if you're asking them to imagine to do something which doesn't match with their values and beliefs, you know, I think that can be really complex and that can be really tricky because, you know, if you're going to feel dirty or yucky or something that you feel like demeaned because you're doing it or something like if those are the emotions that are coming up for you by imagining that fantasy uh, then that's problematic right like you know that defeats the purpose because the whole point of the fantasy is to raise arousal and to get you excited Um, so if that's not happening then I'm guessing it doesn't work so um, I have I picked three questions and what I want to do is I want to start with a couple of them but then I want to spend longer on the last one which I think is the most edgy one of the lot and it's actually um, listening to it is also quite um, I don't know disturbing almost because where does it where does it become self-sufficient and where does it become something that you're being coerced into so the very first one and I think in this case it's almost like self-consent but Um, It's from a young girl who says that she followed our um, video from last time, the podcast from last time, and she decided to go with the fantasy exercises. And she says they were great because she's never been able to do uh, fantasy right to the end before. And so she managed to do it, which is brilliant. And she said she tried out all three fantasies. They were great. She managed to orgasm. But now the problem is that she fantasized about herself in a different body shape. So she says that she's a little bit more chubby and she looks a certain way, but in her fantasy, she was like the hottest thing that walked the planet. And while it was fantastic, now she feels that that's the image that's stuck in her head and she doesn't know whether she can face reality looking at looking as she does. Mm-hmm. So if I if I just go with the theme of coercion and that's what came up with me, it's like it's like a partner saying you'll only be attractive if you're a certain body shape, right? And that's what she's saying to herself that I will be sexy or I'll be the hottest thing on this planet if I am a certain body shape. And what would it mean to actually fantasize in the body shape you are? You know, and and you basically get the feeling that you're the hottest thing, that you are the sexiest thing, the way you look and the way you are. And I think that feeling is something that you can replicate and take on to your relationships and everything. Uh, Taking a body is not maybe that easy or possible. And, uh, and, and what I do want to say is that I respect that it's a difficult feeling. I understand that it's a complex feeling. It's very easy for me to say, oh, just feel sexy. Who cares about the body? I know the world 
is all about the body shape and body type and that's a lot of pressure and everything so i don't want to take away from the sentiment i i understand and i agree that it is difficult it is hard um people society does judge on that level and getting out of that cycle you know literally takes a superstar a lot of times and everything but so i well, all i'm saying is i want to respect that sentiment but if you can fantasize with your body type and change your fantasy to make yourself thinking oh in that body shape and body type i could actually be the hottest person be the sexiest person and the partner wanted me because they were attracted to my body shape that just changes it because i think the feeling of being sexy you can actually replicate and take with you to other relationships and other things um i think i want to add to that that um in that particular session anvita actually said this she said um it's not my body that make me sexy it's my mind and i think anvita you made a very positive point of pointing that out you said you know it'll be the conversation that i have it'll be the jokes that i make it'll be all the qu- clever little quips that i make and that will be what is sexy and that's what will seduce the other person and i just want to repeat that that you know feeling sexy is something that comes from within you and um, like anvita says we totally understand how it feels we know we've all been at the receiving end of oh but you look a certain way but still it has to come from within you i don't know if it helps but i want to tell you that you know typically if somebody is a little too beautiful to look at um i mean and, and it's fabulous to look at somebody who's gorgeous to look at but you can only look at them for x amount of time like you can really it's like looking at a chocolate box it's exquisite but what do you do after a while so you can't change the world outside and there are physical things that you can't change but maybe the focus of the fantasy can change yes that's what we're saying so imagine instead that you are fantasizing same thing just change the world okay so don't change your body shape keep the body shape and pretend that that's the body shape that's going to be totally sexy for the person that you're seducing and then go into the mind and go into your conversation and build that part up because that's far easier to build up and go with absolutely and i totally agree with you you know this idea that everybody attractive out there is great at sex or is sexy is it's actually not an equation that matches up like i don't think they can be they can be very attractive and really fitting the societal body types but might be very boring in bed and might not be sexy at all so i don't don't buy into the idea that only certain body shapes are attractive sexy and good in bed uh, that is not true at all those are not synonymous ideas at all yeah so um what we're saying is if you actually tweak uh, just um twiddle with the fantasy a little bit just change it slightly and then go forward so just move it to fit yourself better and the results will be even more powerful and more long lasting okay fantasy number 2 the uh, email that came in was again um around cuckolding so it's about this girl who says that she's in a long distance relationship with her boyfriend and that they have a great relationship and they have phone sex often and he's very into this idea of cuckolding hot wifing threesomes etc so she says that she goes with it and gets a little bit excited as well and then the guilt sets in then she stops and she says every time she says no 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 i can't take this any further because i want to stop i feel guilty the boyfriend is like okay fine we'll stop and she says that's when the real misery sets in because he says okay fine and moves on to talk about other things she is then left feeling guilty about feeling guilty yeah so two things i will talk about this so the first thing is i think what is really tough for the the generation today you know 
active sexually as in lots of people are active gen but you know the generation that we're talking about in the olden days at least the idea was very sad sex is bad sex outside of marriage is bad sex should only be for having children any adventures within sex only lose people do and all so all i'm saying is that this morality jargon was very clear you know it was very and and not that things didn't happen things happened but the morality jargon was the you know the same and i think there has been little bit of liberation sexually because variety or diversity in sex always was present and will always remain present people are just now owning it much more but what has happened with the owning is now people are like oh how do you experiment how often do you experiment what all can you do and what all have you experimented with now it's become more about like how much you are like you know edging it and you must have an orgasm and you must have a great orgasm and all so there's so much pressure around how much you should be doing sexually um and i think people have got stuck between the two you know this morality because they've grown up with that so somewhere they feel that and then they feel the pressure from their peers to be engaging or their partners to be engaging in a different way and i think that clashes and this is a great example of that clash right like she's willing to go with it because she thinks she should be sexually progressive then somewhere she starts feeling guilty because of the morality of the whole thing and when she says no she then feels guilty about not being able to be sexual the way her partner or she wants to be so yeah i found that really interesting up. that you know because maybe if he was like no you have to think about it she would find it so much easier to rebel or say okay he's insisting i do it and i do it or how dare he tell me not to but the fact that he's saying okay it's your decision i think so there's a weird kind of coerciveness here no but i think that's great because i think what works in a fantasy is when it is yours right like and what people need to start doing is rather than going into your partner's fantasy it's taking that idea and building your own because what arouses you is not what arouses him or her so you the storyline if we think about it or the backdrop as we think about it can be the same like we spoke about in the last fantasy video so your your backdrop could be that you're still by the ocean you're still outside but what in that fantasy arouses you and what in the fantasy arouses your partner and the two of you can speak about it so even in this fantasy that she's speaking about it is she needs to build her own storyline of what is attractive because the storyline he is offering is not working for her so there might be aspects of it that might work for her and also maybe her boundary for that story is just that much you know maybe the boundary for the story is or oh, there are multiple sexual partners coming in you're talking you take out your clothes you touch but the penetration might be too much so you can stop the fantasy there and replace it with your own partner right so those are the compromises and the adjustments and the communication that you can do uh, even within a fantasy you know we're not even going into reality but you always have to remember that if a fantasy is making you feel like i said the guilt sadness irritation anger dirty whatever then it's breaking up arousal so in the fantasy that's your breaking point okay yeah i think guilt and unhappiness is the worst thing you can do for arousal i mean they don't go hand in hand if you're feeling unhappy in your head you are not going to be having great sex no matter how hot you look so remember it is really all about over here so finally it's, great, the, it's a great learning for you to say okay this is my boundary so everything before is okay for me and at this point i feel uncomfortable so let's not extend the fantasy from here can we build more on what we've discussed previously right and you can and you can build on that fantasy like it can be different 
Yeah, actually, that's a really good. Uh, it's like we talk about edging, right? Uh, when you're when you're going to have an orgasm and you get to that point and you want to stop yourself, it's the same thing. When you're fantasizing, if you actually find that there comes a point where you suddenly think, "Ah, this is where my arousal is starting to drop," you know that that's the point where your fantasy is going wrong for you. So you need to understand this. Okay, final one that I want to bring up because I actually um, I'm I'm at my wit's end. I've known this um, particular story for a while. This person has been talking to me about her uh, uh, partner's fantasies for a while. Now, the partner has this thing. Again, it's a long distance relationship currently, but wasn't always. The partner has this thing about seeing her as a hot wife. So he wants her to sleep with multiple people every day. So it's every day a different person. Now, in his head, the fantasy has gone to the next level where he wants it to sound as real as possible. So we've talked about sort of creating fantasy worlds and kind of going into this whole thing of, you know, making it as um, as suitable to yourself as you want. He wants it to be as real as possible. And so he insists that the fantasy has to be around people that he is acquainted with. So her friends, who he knows, he wants her to build stories around having sex with them. And every day that sex is supposed to get a little bit more deviant, a little bit harder, a little bit more. And it's the details that she says are killing her. She says, you know, I do it just for him. I wouldn't mind. But it's so consistent. It's so every day. It's so much more every single day that she really doesn't know where the line is anymore, whether it's just a fantasy or whether he's actually wanting it to go into reality. And she says that now what's happened is that just having to do this every day, having to talk about yourself, because she's having to build the fantasy and tell him, you tell him, she says, having to talk about myself like this every single day, it's making me feel sick about myself. It's making me hate myself. And she said it, it got to a point where one day she said to him, I need to stop because I think I'm going to throw up. And he said to her, OK, I'll wait. You go and you can come back and we'll carry on. Yeah, that's not working. Yeah, not working at all. <laughs> but OK, so let's think about this. What is happening here is that he's imposing his fantasy onto her. What I kept hearing is, that she is playing his fantasy, like she is the actress of his fantasy. But he, if he was a storyteller, he's given her the idea, but hasn't even written the script and is asking her to write the script, enact in it, decide who the co-actors are going to be. What we need to really remember is that the fantasies are yours. And it would mean very different things if he said, I fantasize this way, let me come and share that fantasy, right? So in my head, I'm thinking, you should be the one who should be coming every day and imagining the details and sharing the details and talking about the details because it arouses you, not the partner. So why this expectation that she should come up with the details and she should come up with the storyline and she should come up with the characters is problematic because in some ways it might it's problematic because you need to yourself think about your own values, beliefs, what you agree with. Do you agree with it? Do you believe in a monogamy? Do you believe in, you know, having sex with different people? How do you feel about having sexual thoughts about friends? Uh, and it's all individual. There is nothing judgmental about it. There's some people who mentally think, oh, that friend looks, you know, I feel very attracted. And if I was single, that would be definitely a person I would love to have sex with. And there's others who wouldn't even venture in that category because they think it's wrong. So it's individual. It's not decided. But, but if you're someone who doesn't even imagine having sex with a friend and then you're, this fantasy is imposed on you, that is really hard. And that's what I'm saying that it's really hard. So going back to the idea of your fantasy should be yours. 
and the two fantasies can meet. But right now what's happening here is he's imposing his fantasy on her. And he is expecting her to do all the work in the fantasy and it's not even hers. So if he wants to stay with this fantasy, then he should come with the characters and the details and the storylines and everything. Um, because obviously this is something that is not giving her pleasure. So if you're a couple and you want to come up with the fantasy, merge your two fantasies together. Here, it's no merging. It's here, it's his fantasy and she is not receiving any pleasure out of it. It's totally his fantasy. And I think one other person had written and said that, you know, my partner likes to think of um, us in, as threesomes. And she says, but, you know, even imagining him with another woman, because he wants to introduce another woman into the mix, imagining him with another woman is really distressing to me. And I was just thinking, in her case, just the, I, because, you know, it's got to this point where it's so real, which is why I thought that this definitely, um, it, it comes under the heading of coercion, because even in that fantasy, it's actually starting to feel abusive. Yeah. And I, see, because I think absolutely, because if in her head, if she has to start imagining having sex with somebody who's known, to her, um, it might be very disturbing and uncomfortable for her because she might have some sanctity of the relationship, she might have some respect in the relationship, she might have some boundaries in the relationship, and she's breaking all of those um, to, you know, you know, imagine something like this. So she is doing, she is really breaking all of those things. Whereas for him, those boundaries might be more stretched, you know, he might be somebody who can imagine having sex with people, but have a respectful relationship in his, you know, he might be open to having sex with friends and continuing the friendships and all. And so, and, and once again, there's no judgment, but that's something that is plausible in his world. And there is something uncomfortable in her world, you know. So I think that's where the problem lies. So if that's your fantasy and you feel comfortable, then provide the fantasy. You know, she might be willing to go along with it, but you he can narrate his own fantasy rather than forcing her to narrate it in some ways. So tell me something. If it gets to be really difficult, if it gets to be bad, if it's um, incessant, which it has been now, um, you know, because of COVID, it's been long distance and it's been incessant for two years. If it gets to be really bad and this doesn't change and, you know, your mental state starts to deteriorate because, you know, you're feeling this pressure to have to come up with things that make you feel sick about yourself. I, I have to say that at the best of times, you cannot fantasize about the same thing every day. It's like having dal chawal every day, no? like you said last time. You can have caviar every day, but even that you get fed up of. You need a change. So um, is it a deal breaker? So I think what we need to remember here is that in any relationship, taking care of each other's pleasure or taking care of your own pleasure. So even if you don't put the responsibility on your partner, if you're talking about a sexual relationship, pleasure of every individual is important. You know, it, it doesn't work if one person is not experiencing any pleasure and the other one is. And so it doesn't matter if it's fantasy or real life. If your partner is saying, at this moment, I'm not feeling any pleasure, I'm actually feeling like throwing up, there has to be some respect to say, you know, let's take care of you right now. Like, where is the taking care of the partner? So you're not really liking this. So rather than saying, no, this is how I want it, there has to be respect. So I don't know about the you know, I think every relationship has multiple aspects to it. But I definitely think it's okay to say no, to say, 
this fantasy doesn't work for me. You need to come up with another one. We need to come up with something that is more mutually inclusive to my pleasure and how I feel. Uh, because, you know, like in, in some ways, if you think about it, she can turn around and say, you know, I am unable to have sex or good sex now because this is the only fantasy that I talk about. So there's a big element of her life that has been taken away from her for because of this fantasy, right? So she can definitely in a relationship say, okay, what about my sexual needs and what gives me sexual pleasure? Because this is not giving me sexual pleasure. So where is my need and my uh, pleasure in this whole thing? So I think what I have taken away from everything that we've talked about today, and I really want to make a point of saying this to everyone out there, because we do get, you wouldn't believe how many emails have come in about either men saying, oh, but you know, it's just a fantasy. Why won't you be part of it? Or women saying, this is his fantasy. And I don't want to be part, you know, and, and constantly like there was, and also uh, similarly, you know, a man saying, this is her fantasy and I don't want to be part of it. So there is a, there's been a lot of people writing in about the fact that their fantasies do not come together, that they don't merge, that they don't coincide. So I guess what we have said today, number one, which is very, very important, that um, pleasure, any kind of intimacy, any kind of intimate relationship should give equal pleasure to both people. If that's not happening, then there is something not okay with it. The other thing is that, yes, it is equally possible to be abusive in a fantasy. Just because it's only in the imagination and you're not doing it in real life, it doesn't mean that it's okay. There's an equal chance of coercion. And even in a fantasy, consent is really important if pleasure is going to be equal for both people. And that finally, and I like this point that you made, Anmita, I hadn't thought of it like that, that you know, there is some point in the fantasy where each person feels that their arousal is going up and there is some point where you feel actually this is it. From here, it's downward. And so it's about understanding how to merge your fantasies. So taking each ones and trying to bring them together so that it gives you both equal pleasure. Because honestly, this is something that the Kama Sutra repeats constantly that if intimacy is not equally pleasurable for both, it's pointless, you know, like that's how it should be. And I don't understand why that is such a difficult concept for so many people that pleasure should only belong to one person. No, we've said it over and over and not even in fantasy should it only be one sided. And if it is very one sided where you can never get your, uh, your fantasies to meet, then there has to be an equal number of times where one person gets their chance and the other person gets their chance. So they play to each other. But um, yeah, I think what I would like to take away from this particular um, talk is that understand at what point your pleasure starts to go down, where that stops being wonderful for you and stopping it for yourself over there. So you change the direction of your fantasy. Absolutely. And I think it is about saying it is own your fantasies, you know, think about your own pleasure and your own fantasy and you can see superimpose it on each other's fantasy. But till you don't own a fantasy and it's not your fantasy or that's not what's giving you arousal, it's not going to work. Um, and I totally agree with you that it needs to be equal. And I can assure you that when your partner, once again, gender agnostic, when your partner is enjoying sex, you're going to exponentially enjoy sex much more. Uh, versus when your partner is feeling like throwing up, um, you know, unless that's a fetish, I don't see how sex is good for you, you know. So try it the other way around where your, your partner is enjoying sex. And I think once that is happening or enjoying a fantasy or getting excited by a fantasy or, you know, getting aroused by a fantasy, try that. Like if your partner is getting aroused and excited by a fantasy, 
your fantasy or your arousal will be that much higher rather than imposing something they dislike. And I think a little bit of variety, the idea of introducing fantasy is to take away the, the monotony, to introduce variety. So if you have the same thing every day, you're not then introducing variety, you're reintroducing monotony. And, and that, you know, if it's not working for your partner, it's all in the imagination. So it's not like, Okay, maybe even the positions in the Kama Sutra were limited, but fantasies are unlimited. So if one's not working, there's another one available. So um, there are just unlimited fantasies that you could make and, you know, join and like merge. It's like Lego pieces. Yeah, so just come up with something new if this one is not working. Um, And it's just a fantasy. So it's in your imaginations. Forget the logistics like we said last time. Um, and try out anything. Try out anything. Um, I I really don't know whether whatever we've suggested today for everybody out there, whether it's something that you will be able to put into practical use immediately or over a period of time. I think it's a difficult one. But I would like you to think about it because this is the sort of thing that will need a little bit of time to do. You know, you can't shift your mental... Um, ideas or your mental blocks or your mental um, uh, desires very easily. They don't happen overnight. Take what we've said on board, try and fix it. And remember, fantasy should be about pleasure and not about wanting to throw up. If you feel like throwing up, something is not right over there. And if your partner is pushing you to that point, I, I really think that if imagine actually being with that person and wanting to go and throw up after sex. You know, there is um, something seriously wrong over there and you do need to take a closer look at your relationship if that's the case. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I just hope that that helps. If you have any other questions or you have other things that you'd like to talk to us about, and even if it's just comments, do comment, like, subscribe on the video. I'm over here on info.seema.anand.gmail.com in case you want to write in to me. And of course, if you want to book an appointment for um, a session with Dr. Anvita Madan Behel, she is on. Anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com. And in the meantime, um, continue fantasizing. They're good for you. But understand what your limits and boundaries are. Don't feel pushed into anything. Just remind yourself constantly, fantasy equals enjoyment. Remember, you're going in there to to feel happy, to feel good, not to feel awful, not to feel guilty, not to feel sad, not to feel bad about something. Go and be safe, be happy, and we wish you good mental health.